This is Nan Teinberg of the Palm Springs Public Library's Local History Project. I am here today with Joan Tui, who represents the third generation of a family who played a vital part in the history of Palm Springs. It is a beautiful, warm, sunny day in Palm Springs, where we are conducting this interview in the southern end of town, and the date is the last day of March, the 31st, 1987. We are very fortunate, Joan, to have you today for a number of reasons, and uh, you're leaving tomorrow, <laughs> so we are particularly fortunate that uh, you are here to talk to us about your, your family. Let's start with your grandparents. They were Edward and uh, Henry, Hen Henry and Florence, Florence Wick, W-I-C-K, Wick. W -I -C -K. and they yeah. came here from Cleveland. And tell us a little bit about your grandfather's preceding your grandmother out west and his sort of discovery of the west. Well, grandfather came out on a hunting trip with some fellow men that he knew from working and they drove out and stopped along the way and they were shooting bears, I understand it, in Colorado and finally came down into the desert and grandfather fell in love with the spot immediately and decided this is where he wanted to retire. And then he, uh, your, your grandparents moved out in what what year did it must have been? It was a, the the first year grandfather stayed in uh, Nellie Kaufman's, and then the next year I think they stayed probably one year there, and then one year more at Desert Inn while they were building their home uh, up on Mesa and Overlook. Right. So the, you you figure this was around 1921 or 22. I think when they when the house was finished, yes, it had to have been about then. In that order, and there. Would their house, the house was built in what we call now the Mesa area, Mesa. and would that have been considered quite far out of town at the well, time? Well, it was, but it was very quiet, yes. and, and this is what they wanted. We, we, we've sort of decided that probably Alva Hicks built the house because he was the contractor the builder, the builder in, in, in town and before he bought okay. the water company. So they probably are, they really are. I rather, uh, I rather imagine, but naturally I was so young at yes. that. I mean, I, I don't think I was, well, I wasn't born then. <laughs> <laughs> I can hardly say yes, they were, but I'm sure it probably was. What it, do you remember about, about the house, uh, your earliest years? You, of course, came out, and we'll get into well, that. Well, because as children, later. we stayed at the Desert Inn because Grandfather yes. wanted us out here, but not under his feet. Yes. And uh, it was just a lovely, simple house. Our grandfather went out and planted... Uh, various trees and he did the grafting on his own trees and he pollinated his date palms and he just loved the the nature of the, and the fauna and the flora of this area. Let me go back uh, just a bit. How did how did your grandparents arrive here when they moved out permanently? They drove. They drove. They drove. That is remarkable. It must have taken a month. <laughs> uh, I probably did. They They drove out here every single year until about 52 or 3 was and the last year they drove out. Truly remarkable. And they, you, you have a story about their houseman. Oh, Thomas. Thomas was a Chinaman, complete with the little hat and the queue. And his children, when he would serve, we were always dying to push up the hat and pull the queue down. <laughs> And Thomas's son was a violinist for this Los Angeles Symphony Orchestra. Wonderful. And uh, at the end of the season when the family would go back, uh, Thomas would go and stay with his son and somehow he always seemed to know when grandfather was coming back because there was no communication because Thomas couldn't read uh, English, but he would always appear and immediately take over the duties of the house. That is wonderful and he would just appear in Palm Springs. Just appear at, at, at the their, house. On their doorstep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, literally. <laughs> And they would come out for uh, several months? They would come out in the September and stay until about the 15th of May. Do you recall who, your, who their neighbors were at the time? Yes, there was, uh, I'm trying to think, the Gillettes of, of, mm -hmm. uh, were lived right behind them. And then uh, Bill Kitston out of Chicago was also another neighbor. And then a nephew and niece of my grandfather's, uh, Polly and Frank Alcott had the little, sort of like a soddy house right across the street. And they lived here in the wintertime and, and uh, uh, La Jolla in the summer. Were there, in, you, you talked about Indian children. 
the other oh, direction? Oh, yes. Or? There were no houses between uh, Messon Overlook down to the Indian property. Mm -hmm. And the Indian children, of course, were all down there, rather prolific. And uh, I can remember they used to come up, and Grandfather loved the children and loved to tell stories. So he'd hold them all in his lap and tell them stories. And Did well, they call him Gramps? As well, probably did. No. I think every <laughs> child did. The yeah. parents may not have. Yes. <laughs> I'm sure the children did. You have a particular memory of one child who did call him Gramps. Yes, and I was very jealous. It was <laughs> Shirley Temple. <laughs> Do you recall, was she living, staying nearby, or was that because she was at I, the Desert Inn? And I think probably because she was at the Desert okay. Inn and the, and the family used to come down. We'd all have dinner together when we were staying right. down there. Right. Yes. And do you, do you remember what she was like, other than the fact that you were No, I was her. just jealous, so yeah. I didn't like her, yeah. automatically. <laughs> no real reason at all. Well, she did receive a lot of attention. <gasps> uh, your, your grandparents were, were still very much formal Midwesterners, even though they settled out here. And you talked about, what was their typical day like? for example. Well, they'd get up and they'd have an early breakfast about 7 o'clock and then it was time to get in the car and drive down to the post office and do the marketing. Mm -hmm. And then they would come home and have their lunch and then after a little nap they usually took a drive in the afternoon. My grandfather would take us to different areas in the desert. They must have been one of the few people to have a car uh, at that time. Well, of course, Around. I wasn't aware of a lot of cars sure. or things at all. Sure, Yes, people either walked or rode horses or rode in the street, I, well, we, I oh, understand. That's what I did, ride horseback. Yes, <laughs> yes. And, the, and he still wore... All three-piece suit, felt fedora hat, and carried a cane. And your grandmother, she Always was wore a dress, never anything else but a dress or a suit, and, and uh, you know, just... A hat when she went out. I mean, of course, everybody in those yes. days wore hats yes. to church. They were, I was even forced to wear a hat to church. <laughs> even in Palm Springs. Even in Palm Springs. Yeah. She was less active than your grandfather. Your yes. Grandfather really. Grandma was on the heavy side, nature. and grandfather was very lean. No matter what he ate, he never gained an ounce because he exercised so much. And grandmother was inclined to, to overweight and loved her food. Set a good <laughs> table, as the expression goes. <laughs> Your, your grandfather was really a horticulturalist that, when, when he, he yes. had an avocation and he... He loved all the, all the different growth out here and he never had any lawn in his, when it was his. It was mm -hmm. always desert and always desert mm -hmm. plantings all around. Yes, he was rather progressive yes. in, in, in that area. And also, he, you talk about your, the hikes that he would, he would oh, walk. Oh yes, always we'd walk up in the mountains, always when we were out here. And we were told to look for different things like spores of animals and so forth. No, he enjoyed that very much. Also, they were friendly with um, a lot of local people, prominent local names, particularly the Boyds. Yeah, Dot and Phil Boyd. Yes, who were really a generation younger than they, but they yes, I think probably that association came through my mother and father. I see. But I they see. became very close friends because, of course, they were full-time residents, as yes. were grandmother and grandfather. Right, right. You also talk about your grandparents' involvement with the community church. Yes, he was one of the founders of the community yes, church. Yes, that is. And, uh, of course, we knew the Lickens. They just lived down the street from us. And you knew as... Jane. J Jane, yeah. right. And uh, talk about the Bennetts. They also were, were friendly with Oh, the, yes, the very Bennetts. friendly with, with uh, Melba and Frank and young Dee Dee. And uh, we would go out in those days, of course, even though it was a guest ranch, uh, because of being old-time residents and natives, they would allow grandmother and grandfather to bring us in for meals, both there and at Smoke Tree, even at Desert Inn if we weren't staying there, yes. at Angleside. Yes. You, you do talk about the kinds of fun that, that that generation, your grandparents' generation had, was really going out for dinner with the families, particularly on Sundays, and you, you went to the to inns and... That's, that's and, right, and, and they tried to give us a little variety of what we yeah. would see while we were out here. And you remember the, the various hotels and, and places where you, as a young Just child, would have... Well, basic, ba and basically it was Desert Inn, yes. Smoke Tree, or, or, or Deep Well. I mean, yes. North, we didn't do places like Chi-Chi's. <laughs> right, right. That was later. That, that came later. That was your later. parents' generation and your generation. 
Yes, it was interesting that they maintained a very staid oh, existence yes, and uh, very much so. Living here at such an early an early time, you have memories of the either the first or the second or a very early pastor at the community church. Oh yes, Bertram Wetherill. Yes. And uh, no, I I and he I, and his wife. He and his wife. Yes. And I fell in love with Dr. Wetherill, and I wanted him to marry me, but it couldn't, didn't work out with our timing schedule. Yeah. And, and he was he a charming still, person. He was still around when, when you got married, in yes. other words. Yes, I think he died in 60, somewhere along yes. there, but he'd moved to Los Angeles. His wife died down here, and then he retired yeah. someplace where they had children. I lost track of him when he moved away. And were, they were uh, part of the community, very active Oh, the very much so. Very much so. Physically, you were they. You described. They were very small people. Small, active. Active people. Yes. I think it's it's interesting that your your grandfather got around in 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 his car. You you he would take your grandmother exploring. Oh when, yes. when she did get away from the domestic chores and in their their. Model T or whatever. Yeah, whatever it was, <laughs> uh, the touring car, I think touring it was called car, in those yes. days. Yes, and, and, and uh, drive ar around. We drive around, and of course they always came and picked us up at the at the Whitewater for the, when the train, because that's how we came out. Yes. And uh, well, that's a story in itself about your grandfather picking you up when you came out on the train. Uh, for what five days on from? Oh, it was about from five days. Detroit, the Detroit easily, area, easily, yes, yes, where you grew up. And uh, do you remember the train rides? Oh, did I do. Oh, the trains were wonderful. And the, when we, I was very, very young, we didn't used to have diners on the trains. And they would oh. stop. And that's oh. where you'd pick up your meals and have them brought on in trays. Oh, more, more the, much the, like airplane travel. Yes, yes. Interesting. You'd yeah. stop at whatever, whatever city it was, and they would put the food on yes. the train, and then you, you had your meals that way. And then came the dining cars. And you weren't bored. You you were. Oh, we were well equipped with games yes. and. and I always loved. A lot of I loved the West, and it was such fun to look out the mountains and the streams, and it was such open, the beautiful country. Then. Well, and there yes. were it wasn't like you didn't go through big cities. Everything was. You really saw the. And you'd stop, and there'd be Indians country. sitting around wanting their pictures taken when you stop at different depots and things. No, it was a wonderful experience. You first started coming out when you were quite young, two or three. Two years old. Yes, yes. And, and the train ride was more like five days? I think it must have been at least five days. Yes. And your it grandfather would pick you up at Whitewater. At Whitewater. The Whitewater Station Just after having changed no, I can't remember whether it was San Bernardino or Redlands or where, but I just know it would be changed the trains coming across. Yes. And you have a story about the wind that uh, we're still grand, dealing what, with. What, what, what a, one of grandfather's yeah. famous t sayings was, waste not, want, want not. Mm -hmm. So when he would pick us up, and once we got on the highway, which wasn't much of a highway in those days, uh, he would very carefully turn the engine off, and uh, he said, if, we're, if there's a good wind today, we'll get all the way into Palm Springs without using any gas. And we usually did. That's wonderful. <laughs> he was able to harness the <laughs> harness, energy. That's, that's, and you're still doing it. That is certainly being done now. You uh, have some memories of Pearl McManus. You've been associated with this area, which is the tennis club area, for a long period of time. Yes, grandmother and, and grandfather were one of the charter members, I think, over at the tennis club, and we're very close to Pearl and her what, husband. What was, what was that? Could you describe the, uh, the facility, what it was like? It was a very simple place. There were like four tennis courts and the same, the same pool. I still have pictures of the. I'm sure it's the same pool today. And it was just one dining room. You went up the mm -hmm. little low flight of stairs, and it was just one small dining room. It wasn't anything like it is now. Did it, it was a very warm, and you yes. knew practically everybody in the tennis club. I mean, there were no strangers. Is that really. where you played, played That's tennis? That's where I used to play your, tennis. your parents were mm -hmm. involved mm -hmm. in that. Your grand, grandparents were they, not. They were they not they athletes in yes. that sense of the word, but yes. they, my parents were. Yes. It was either that or it was going off to O'Donnell to play golf. or <laughs> And wasn't there an Odlum golf course? There was an old golf course that really preceded O'Donnell on the grounds of the El Mirador. And I'm not sure what, it, what the name now, was. The Odlum was down further. Well, all right. I don't, that's I, it, well, I'm not familiar with the name, which does not mean no. that. 
No, the, the, but that I, the I remember this thing. The courses that preceded O'Donnell actually to, could have been named. Yeah, yes. I guess La Quinta, I know, was one that they used to play later on in life. That is. Right, right. Okay. And your the, your parents were involved with uh, with these kinds of activities. You you, so. you talk about uh, the difference between Pearl McManus, for example, Annie Pearl, and Joan, her sister-in-law. Well, there was no comparison. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, better be, we better be tactful. <laughs> we don't hear too much about Joan. No. And, and so what, what are your memories? Well, I never that? really knew Joni until after Pearl had died. Mm -hmm. And at that time, I suppose now we're well in the 50s, maybe even the early 60s, and Mother and I were coming down here. My grandparents had died. And uh, Joan used to live right across the street. And uh, she had very bad arthritis, and she used to come over here. But I can remember when our landlord, Alan Petty, wanted to buy this. Uh, she, oh, she was very difficult to deal with. Yes. But That's I never had a problem with her because I didn't have to deal in that sense. Yes. Yeah, she certainly did a lot for the town, but she was a tough, yeah, tough cook. Yeah, she knew what she wanted. Yes. She went after it. And your, your memories... Uh, as a very young child, you would have been extremely young of Nellie Kaufman, or probably rather very brief, vague. Brief very and vague. vague the, yes, uh, I think most of my memories, are, other than yeah. pictures that grandfather had, yes. would have been stories that he told. Because, as I said, he loved to tell stories, and what, particularly to children. Do you recall any of the stories he might have told? He oh. talked about the the, the, the wild. The wild. Yes. Uh, but then, when he first came out here, before he brought grandmother. Uh, he stayed as a guest in Nellie Kaufman's house. Yes. And I believe that before the Desert Inn was completed, that uh, grandmother and he both stayed with her one, one year. And he uh, described her warmly and fondly. Oh, oh yes, obviously. yes. Very warm and dear person. And I think another one of the reasons why grandfather decided to settle here was because of Nellie. When you, uh, you, you've spoken about uh, Again, you're, I'm fascinated with your transportation in, in, in arriving here. You started coming at a very early age, and your parents came for a brief, well, for we the, used to for stay out winter, about a month to six winters, weeks. Winters. Mm -hmm. And this was in around 26. Not 26, 27. Yes. Yeah, it had to be 26. And who was Cliff? Cliff was, I don't know whether he came from the Desert Inn or whether he came from Smoke Tree, but he would come over and bring the horses over for us. Before we went to school, we would ride in the morning. And then after we went to the school over at Smoke Tree, then of course we had to go ride in the afternoon, which meant don't concentrate too hard in the morning or you'll miss the ride in the afternoon. <laughs> So you have you were a, a young child toddling yeah. around uh, when you when you first came out and were were I you used to sit in front of Cliff on his horse when I was two. By three, I was riding by myself. That's wonderful. <laughs> yes, with a lead rein, of course. We have to admit, we have to admit, I had a lead rein. <laughs> acclimated <laughs> to to the desert from Michigan. No, no, but we had horses in Michigan too. So yeah, but this was. Certainly, you were different. dealing dealing with the climate and the bugs. Yes. And do you, do you recall concern on your parents' part with any of that, with the sun, with the the bugs and and the wild? And I know your grandfather. No, the had funny thing is, all the pictures we have, of course, we wore different clothes. The children in those days, you know, the sure. shorts came down to about here, yes. and the sleeves were here. Yes, well, that's uh, happening but I never, again. <laughs> but I never, I never see in all the pictures. There's not one of us with hats on, which I'm amazed. That's interesting. Yes. Mother yes. used to wear a hat. Of course, my I'm grandmother, sure grandmother did. Oh yes, oh yes. All Black straw. I can see it now. Yes. But uh, no, I never wore a hat. And the 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 bugs, the the snakes, and the bugs, and the. Well, I was were. never very fond of of the creepy crawly creatures, and, and I they remember they were much more prevalent than. They oh, are indeed, now, yes. I remember we killed a uh, scorpion on the wall one day, and oh. grandfather explained to me what it was. And that was enough. I stay away from those places. <laughs> well, he was interested in nature. Did he? Very under, much so. Did he warn you about uh, black widows and scorpions and snakes? And was he involved in no, that? No. The only thing I remember was sitting on the porch in the evenings in, in, in May when it would be still warm yes. in the evenings when it was yes. dark, and the bats used to fly. And I was very afraid of the bats. That's right. There used to be bats. Oh yes. bats. And used to no, we used to hang ribbons down from the uh, ceiling oh, to, to make them go out away from the uh, terrace yes. area. Yes, yeah. But you 
you, of course, your grandparents had lived here and were acclimated, and, and this was not an exotic, unusual, well, dangerous grandfather, place. Well, grandfather, you know, he worked his, his land well, so I think he knew, and I guess snakes do live in nests or something, so I mean, he knew pretty much what was on his property. Do you recall seeing rattlesnakes or sidewinders? Always or? when we were riding. Yes. When we'd ride up into the mountains, yes, we'd see them. Yes. And you, did, were you, did you have precautions? Did you wear heavy boots at Always, the time? oh yes, always wore yes. boots. Yes. Oh, yes. And that was just a way of life. But as time. long as you were on a horse and could look down, yes. and the horse wasn't very fond of them either. Uh, <laughs> One thing I thought about uh, were the canyons. Uh, were they still explorable? Were they explorable? Oh, the, yes. We used times? to go up and have uh, picnics all the time up in the canyons. And did you, w were they monitored by the Indians at, th at that time? or, or I don't remember that. I don't remember that until later. I think I much think later so. in the, in the yes. early days, you could go practically any yes. place. I mean, laid out in squares, so yes. the Indians owned it, but they didn't. Sure. Unless you were going to yes. go in and light a fire or do yes. something that was going to hurt their land, they didn't seem to care what do we did. Do you recall when it was warm and that's where you rode? You oh, would go definitely to a up to the falls. Area. Oh yes, and always have picnics near the falls, so you had fresh water. Talk to me a little bit about um, your school when you you would attend school at Smoke Tree. Smoke Tree School was in the morning, three hours, and they would send your assignments from home. And they, uh, I don't remember the teacher's name, but uh, she would go around and check what yes. you had to do, and she'd know the length of time you were going to be there and how much you should cover in a day, and this would be your section. Then she'd go on to the next child, and we were all in one room, and there'd be... Mixed doubt, ages. Huh? Mixed ages, yes. but I doubt if anyone was there much beyond the fourth or fifth grade. Yes. I think after that, we... Most of us stayed home and as stuck you, by the studies. As you did, you, yes. you stopped coming Yes, quite a period there, about six or eight years. Where yes, I think uh, your, your teacher might well have been a lady by the name of Vi Watson, because this is what she did. She was a school teacher for visitors at could, the Desert Inn and other... It could be, so as I say, could, I, could I, well I, I don't remember. All, it was just all I remember is the one, one room and... Can I go out now? Yes. <laughs> Am I finished? <laughs> was it difficult to 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 work under that those circumstances? Did were you often outside? No, we were, were we were we were, were it was inside. inside. Oh yes, inside. And were you looking outside at the oh, definitely. And the beckoning sun? Definitely. And, so forth? and if anyone went by with a horse, I was ah. <laughs> yes, it I was must gone. Have been, been difficult. My too. mind was not on my work. <laughs> did you have homework at night? No, no, no. We never did you homework did, at night. You did. It was your just. Work it was just the, those three the, hours in the morning. That's the, in the morning. Mm -hmm. And then, would you would you have lunch at school? Do you recall? Is that off? I don't remember. I have a funny feeling we came home and had Probably. lunch back at the inn. Probably. Before yes. going out riding, yeah. You not only stayed at the Desert Inn, uh, but you stayed. Other we stayed. Places we stayed at deep. We stayed at deep well in those days, and also yes. at, at uh, uh, Smoke Tree. What did what what did desert what was desert in like? But were there was there a oh, difference? Oh, it was beautiful. Difference between let's say the atmosphere at Smoke Tree and Deep Well and Desert Inn. Oh, they were all each one was different, and I can remember, and I still if I had that certain smell, it was must have been mm. the wood that they were burning mm -hmm. in the entrance. Mm. You'd walk in and, and and oh, it was just gorgeous. What uh, what did the I think did the Desert Inn uh, have a swimming pool? I know the oh, Desert yes. Inn had a swimming pool. Did did the others as well? At that uh, early time? I don't think, I don't think Deepwell did, but I think Smoke Tree did. I'm almost sure they did. Was that uh, an attraction? Did, did everybody sort of lie around the pool? Oh, I don't think we sunned in those days. I mean, anyone in the right mind doesn't yes. sun. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, <laughs> actually being grandchildren and members of the family of yes. a resident, uh, we weren't allowed just to sit in the sun. But so people, you, you didn't see the, the scene of people no, lying no. around mm -mm. the sun and, and... You got all the sun you needed playing tennis, playing golf, so riding horseback. Riding. It was just to cool off, to cool basically. Off. You would or exercise, yes. if that was your right. kick. Right. Apparently, there, there really weren't a lot of swimming pools around. Um, no, early, there weren't. Uh, and of course, it was the desert. The, the humidity was yes. so much lower than... What were the rooms like at the Desert Inn? You, did you there stay was, in cottages? Oh, we stayed in cottages. Mm -hmm. And they were very warm, very much, um, well, it's hard to describe. 
but they were very simple mm -hmm. stucco walls and I remember they all had fireplaces mm -hmm. very much like like uh, smoke tree mm -hmm. still does mm -hmm. today in most of theirs but where smoke tree rooms are a little more modern these were still done in a simple early uh, I suppose you call it Spanish style yes. a lot of yes. tile and uh, like at that red British brown adobe tile on the floors yes, sure, the and then there'll be decorative tiles like it is a dado in the walls it's, it was a big wood furniture with you know posted and several seats. rooms per cottage if, if there were families well if in our case we would have uh, probably a, a two cottages mother yes, and fa father would have one and then we would have one with my brother and myself with our governess but no eating facilities in, in the cottages. Everyone went to the communal dining we room. We always went into the dining room. Yes. And they had like two seatings. They had one early right. at five o'clock for the right. children and then the adults ate yes. later. Did they provide entertainment at the Desert Inn for families? Do you recall? Oh yes, there was. But when I was older, I remember yes. this. Not yes. when I was younger, but when I was older, yes, there were activities just like they have at uh, Smoke Tree. There would be bingo or something yes. of that nature to mix people up if you didn't have friends out here. Did you remember the when the El Mirador was, well you would still would have been quite young, you would have been four or five when the El Mirador opened, but in later years do you recall going over there or seeing the difference between the El Mirador? Never went to the El Mirador until I went there during the war when it was the yes. hospital. Yes, That's, right. That we was my, I don't know why, that. That, I don't know what what there was against it. I don't yes. maybe grandfather just thought it wasn't the right atmosphere for yes. us. I don't know. Yes. Well, you uh, you were established at uh, Smoke Tree and yes. Desert Inn yeah. and so forth. I was wondering whether you were called the, the there were movie people just and it was it If was there were movie people, my glitzier. grandfather would never yeah. have allowed us. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> His Midwestern. What almost. about the local children, the, a lot of the children of, of pioneers yes. you, you were friendly with, of course you do, did it's mention Jane Licken. Jane Licken. Yes. And, and uh, you, there was this Dee Dee Bennett. What, what were the kinds of things that you would do? You seem to have had a lot of free time. Uh, were there parties? Did you exchange with uh, No, not, not, you know, as children, no. Our, our, our life was pretty well regulated. It mm -hmm. was the school and it was the riding in the afternoon yes. and the swim and early dinner in bed. And then when I got older, that's when I really began to know these people better. I see. And what uh, did you go out together on the on the town when you oh, were yes. older? Oh Dee yes, Dee Dee and I used to. We would work yes. for her mother and father in the yes. in the desert circus or the insanities or whatever they were calling it that year. Yes. And so Dee Dee and I would uh, work by day and run over to the tennis club for lunch and whip back to work again. <laughs> 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 we weren't. We weren't exactly what I would call the best workers. <laughs> we, oh, well, we made you, fun out well, of our you work. Were. You, we you enjoyed took it. advantage of uh, we enjoyed what the it. desert had we to enjoyed offer, it. as you still do. <laughs> Indeed, I do. Uh, your your parents, different generation, completely, and their lives here were vastly opposed in in many ways to to your grandparents. Oh, they yes. had a much more sedentary life. They were much life. more modern. And what were the kinds of of things that your parents did for fun. Nightclubs? Oh, they did the nightclubs, they did the gambling, and yes. they both loved golf, Do you tennis. recall any stories of nightclubs or gambling that No, that not really, parents, except that they used to know. go out and do these yes. things, that's all and I can remember. And they could gamble. Oh yes, they were oh yes, you could gamble. Necessarily locals. They, no, they no, were no, no. So they were, yes. Oh no, it was what, gambling. Any prominent names of n either nightclubs, restaurants, or gambling houses that you you recall from no your I was too young when that when the gambling was yes, going on here yes. to really register right, right. didn't uh, restaurants or did they always I don't go well to was a child hotels. of course we always stayed at Desert Inn and as we got older then I would uh, we would go out to different restaurants like Dow House and Chi Chi's and Ruby Dunes yes. and what did uh, they do uh, athletically did were they were your parents were they oh involved in they did everything Horseback, yes. tennis, swimming, golf. What would a typical day be like in terms of Very of busy care? and very active. Yes. Get yes. home in time to take a shower and go out in the town. <laughs> and you were generally with a nanny or a governess. Oh yes, we always had a governess with us. And usually it would be two families would come out from yes. Detroit. And mm -hmm. so that maybe the kids would play games or something sure. for a little bit, but that sure. was... We would and kiss good night, and that was it. Yes, and your your father <laughs> stayed as well for several weeks. Oh yes. yes, yeah. So you came out on a train with your 
with brother. The, with the, by brother. Periodically, yeah. and, <laughs> until he got older. <laughs> and your and your parents. And, and then, yeah. And you, and you stayed for, for several weeks for the season, mm -hmm. as they say. You have a good memory for um, what the village looked like then. Can you describe it in terms of the streets and the stores? Well, there were just, there were just the two streets and, and uh, Palm and Indian, and of course <laughs> no trees, I mean no traffic lights. It wasn't paved, it was either black topped mm -hmm. or tarred. I can remember the smell of it. And mm -hmm. when you'd ride your horse across, you'd leave your imprints on the road. Yeah. And, uh, Would you see people back and forth on horseback? Would, would that, it, we're in the middle of the street, would that be a common sight? Oh, sure. Sight? Oh, yeah. Yes. Even when we lived over on uh, Potencia Road one year, and that was back in the <coughs> early 50s, uh, Bill and Carol Brill, who were staying there also at the time, we used to, uh, to start horseback riding right out of there mm. and then go up and up to Horsetail Canyon or wherever. No restrictions at all. I don't, I don't even know if there are Well, you could now. get by in then, but, but the now there's, there's, with the washes and the golf yes. courses, you can't get to these yeah. places like you could in those days. You could go right. anywhere on horseback in those days. Right. I'm thinking of restrictions in terms of housing a, a horse. I, I don't know what the rules well, are Well, most now, of the horses were either at, at Smoke Tree, Deep yeah. Well, or out the relay yes. station. So they, they weren't necessarily corralled in one's backyard. No, oh, no, 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 oh, no. And they were not allowed, basically, quote, in the residential area. Uh -huh. But you could take your horse over if you yes. wanted, but uh, yes. it, it wasn't encouraged. Yes. <laughs> and you uh, you didn't do much grocery shopping, or you don't recall that, I'm, because no, well, if, well, if anything, your grandparents went to lick and store and picked everything up that's that they right. needed, or their help did. No, they and always did their own shopping. Oh, they did. Oh, yes. yes. And Remember, Thomas doesn't write, Eng doesn't yeah, write. That, <laughs> doesn't do the English true, so well. So his list wouldn't be <laughs> difficult His list wouldn't be read. very good. <laughs> uh, you were, and you didn't do a whole lot of shopping otherwise when you were here. Not until uh, I was in my 20s when yes. I came back. <laughs> you were, just remember Bullock's in terms of a retail store. Bullock's and Desmond's, I remember at the end of the walk as you came in the Desert Inn, or the entrance, I should say, as you come in. And, and in terms um, of a supermarket. Maloof's maybe. No, there were no yes. supermarkets. Yes. There were, but But not back in the show. 20s, I don't think. Were they? Yes. Um, some early markets and well, there were, yeah. but I just remember the one that was just down in the Palm in, in uh, the Plaza. Sales. The Plaza, yes. sales, yes. sales. Yes. That was it. Yes, and that was owned by Leo Baker, I understand, that and and who is now or was a, is now a, a real estate in real estate, person. but it was <coughs> co-owned by Leo Baker and someone else whose name I've forgotten. No, but that's and there the were, other there were some remember. old old yeah. <coughs> markets, but well, in Lickens, primarily Lickens, Lickens store yeah. that had uh, the post office you could get, and everything else. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, that was fun. Yes. That was fun. Well, we are moving along to where we're moving from the 20s and 30s till the time you came back in 42, mm -hmm. and that was just basically for a visit. For the winter with grandmother mm -hmm. and grandfather. I was through school and they so we came out and nice, stayed with them for, the, for three months. Yes. And how had their lives changed? Well, of course, they were yeah. getting on. They yes. were in their, well into their late 70s at that time. Yes. And uh, Mother and I both used to work as volunteers down at Attorney General in those days. Yes. And we'd bicycle down. And there was no problem with cars. <laughs> you, you talk about the, the fact that in terms of safety, you could bike anywhere. Oh, you and, could and bike just leave your, your bike oh, yeah. oh, anywhere, no, anywhere no, outside. And no problem anywhere. What about, uh, we've heard about the uh, ability to just leave your home for a day and, and not worry about locking doors and, and strangers uh, because the, everybody knew everybody. That's that ab yeah, not, absolutely right. Not a problem. No, no, no problems like that at all. No. And why? They always said the Indians watch for the Indians, but no one ever did. They never <laughs> bothered anybody. Yes, they they. <laughs> <laughs> Even with their mud baths. <laughs> yeah. Do you recall the mud baths? Oh, at all? yes. Oh, did yes. Did you ever take one? Uh, once. I didn't like it very well. Were you uh, a child? Or I was, or yes, I was a child. I was, well, five, around in that age, and mother and father used to take them. 
uh, I think maybe after a night gambling and a little bit of uh, something else. And uh, so they would always tell us about the mud baths and how relaxing they were. And so I always love to try something different. So they took us down, but I... It's like a sauna, either you love it or you yeah, don't. Well, well yeah. sauna's all right, that's clean, yeah. but the mud, yeah. I didn't know. <laughs> Wait, was, uh, it's been described before, but it, it, no one has ever actually talked about the mud. I was, it was mud. I, I was to understand that it was warm water. No, 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 it, but it was you, a mud bath. It, could you rinse off afterwards? Oh, yes. Oh. And then I guess after a while they changed it because then now they are just the pure hot mineral. Oh, yes. But yes. it used to be mud. Yes, and there were Indians who, who oh, manned yes. the they manned uh, station. It. Oh, yes. yes. Oh, yes. And we, we have heard in the, in the early days, in the 20s, it was 25 cents. It was Oh, I'm sure it was. I have no inexpensive. idea, but I'm sure it was very inexpensive. Yeah. And that do, whole area, do you, do you recall what that area looked like? That was, of course, the spot. It was Indians. It was sort yeah. of, you know, teepees, and, well, not really teepees, but I mean lean-to type houses yes. and, and the old mud huts. and and very simple dwellings. Yes. Did you get a sense of, uh, cr well, not crowds, but people go, a num numbers of people going to these things to, to, in other words, I wasn't aware of it. There was never no. any a line and Oh, no, no. No, it did, wasn't that crowded here. Did you go to, to movies? Uh, do you recall going to movies? Didn't go to movies. In the early days, they, they were in Francis Stevens School and, and later on, did, the, pl the plaza. I remember, the one, I remember going to the plaza, but did, that was years ever, later when yes. they had the starlight on the ceiling. That's, that's, people <laughs> have described that, that as, as being a source of wonder to a, to a child to, to walk Oh, it was. In. I mean, you, you sort of yes. spent the whole beginning. <laughs> <laughs> so you did do that later on. Oh, yes, yes. later on. Yes. That, that winter of 42, you were engaged in a lot of activities that, that the local, prominent Just local people were involved in, and of course you talk about volunteering at Tourney General, but you did mention the Desert Circus, and talk about Melba Bennett. What, what, was, she, what was she like? Melba was a driving force. <laughs> I never knew anyone with as much energy as Melba had. And you say someone has different activities and, and, and it sp spreads themselves out, mm. but she did everyone and every activity absolutely. I mean, she never left a stone unturned in any job she took on. If Melba said she'd do it, it was done and every detail was attended to. And she was the driving force behind the Desert the Circus Desert for Circus. many years. What, what did you and, and Dee Dee Bennett, uh, what, what were the kinds of things that you did? We were sort of like gophers, but I mean, yes. if there was a job to be done or errands to be run, we did that, and we did some publicity work, and we would collect money from different stations and, and uh, wherever. If it was maybe it was backstage during the actual show, the Insanities, yes. uh, we would do props, or we'd be sent out to find something they needed. Do for you the remember show. people actually on stage? Who the oh, people yes. were in the, in the Insanities? I remember it was a man who did the the songs and the lyrics was a Mr. Green, and then I used to see his name later on in the film, uh, you know, oh. at the, the end, you know, where they give you all the credits. The credits, mm -hmm. yes. But I don't remember any of the stars were, that came were, down particularly. Well, but lo a lot of local people. Oh, lo a oh, lot of local people, did, but then uh, they'd have guest stars. Melba actually, was she on stage? I don't believe she ever was she on just I think she just an directed organizer. and organized. She was yes. an organizer. Yes. But good. I, oh I, yes. I mean, she ran the ranch. She was doing this. She was working in civic things in the government. And, was and, uh, Frank Bennett more quiet? I would say quite a bit quieter, yes. but he backed up Melba all the way. Yes. I mean, that was sort of nice to come home to after a busy day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I we, I don't hear too much about Frank Bennett. Uh, what what was he was he a big, strong, tall man? He was, oh, yes, was he? very big. And I, as I remember, I think of him as heavy, but maybe I'm doing that by comparison to grandfather, who was very lean. But uh, he was always sort of around the house and just, just following up and backing up Melba. He was a great supporter mm -hmm. of his family. You, you also mentioned another name that uh, somewhat familiar, Louise McElroy. Yes. And uh, from, the, from this time. And uh, something that we, we don't hear too much about was the beauty parlor 
at the plaza, and she was involved in, in that. Louise of the Plaza is Louise McElroy. She came out here during the war. Uh, her husband was stationed up in Banning, I think it was, and she came out to be closer to him. They came from Erie, and uh, she wanted to be busy, and she'd been a beautician mm -hmm. back east, so she started the parlor and still is going at it. Great. Yes, oh, yeah. we She's yeah we don't hear too much about the the the, the barber the shops and the and the the retail stores and the beauty parlors and yes. Yeah, Louise but, has been out here ever since the war. But she is not related to Louise's pantry. Then. No, 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 no relation. That's yes, an entirely right, different. Exactly. Uh, yes. <clears throat> then you came back in forty four under yeah. different circumstances. What what brought you back? Well. We've been doing nurses' aid, and we decided it'd be fun to work with the Army, and they had a program for what they called Army Nurses' Aid. And all you had to have was a thousand working hours, so um, we each signed up, and they sent us a list of where you could go, where we were needed. And Mother went to McKinney, Texas, and I took Attorney General. <laughs> so I came out, and I came out in March, and I stayed here until the following, well, right after, right after the uh, VJ Day. You Shortly were, after you were day. actually here throughout the summers for oh, the yes. first time. For the first time. What, was it shocking, or, or in terms of the intense heat, or? Well, the heat, of course, was was yeah. bad, and yes. and we was based uh, this, this ward that I was on was basically an orthopedic ward, yes. and so we had the good old-fashioned desert coolers going, which I think made things worse rather than better. <laughs> but uh, yeah. thanks to Melba, who let us, a group of us used the. Deep water. pool at the, yes. at the at the ranch and and uh, pearl we could use the tennis club pool uh, yes. it was very passable you were a paid volunteer but paid. you were you had a, a different status really we, well than, yes we were not a nurse or, or a no no we were not issue. officers so therefore and then we were not and you did you were encouraged like, to to fraternize with with the uh, the patients in in terms of building oh, yes. their morale oh yes you have a cute story about one fellow at, at the Chi oh, that had an amputation of his leg and uh, he loved to dance so he put up a chair <laughs> and we would dance around the chair yes. <laughs> Were, were people <laughs> surprised, or did, were they used to seeing? Uh, you saw so many boys yes. with, with various things of this nature, of that uh, amputations, that I, I don't think the average person was too And you did by remark it. on their morale that I, I, As I say, I think that, that they, their morale was, was super. Yes. I mean, particularly and the amputees. And you were a part of building, Working, building their yeah, morale. Yeah, just, you know, if they wanted to go out, you'd go out with them. Do you remember much about the look of the of Tony General? Did it look army barracky, or did it still look like the? No, uh, it looked barracky. It the town. Well, that think, part of I town think, had changed. Oh yes, it had changed considerably. Yes. And uh, no, it was it was it looked like a hospital. Well, one story hospital ward is what it looked like. And you were working. Uh, what what was your work schedule? It, You'd work an eight-hour shift, and you were on for one week, and then you'd get a day off, and then you'd change your shift. So you never worked yes. the same shift. You'd work the seven to three, three to eleven, yes. eleven to seven. Well, as opposed to when you were a young child and you were with your grandparents and and or with your parents, what were the kinds of things you did when in '44? '44, I did a lot <laughs> of things. I, I did a lot of things that grandfather wouldn't exactly have approved. <laughs> well, you were a young adult. <laughs> And as but I say, the whole, <coughs> the whole area. Changed. And then I had, I had, as I say, my cousins that had the place here in the winter, and then a place in La Jolla in the summer. So during the summer, when I had a swing mm -hmm. shift and mm -hmm. had a weekend off, mm -hmm. I would go down to La Jolla by bus. Yes, yes. And that was that was a particularly like, long trip? Then? No, it was maybe four hours, yes. five hours uh, by bus. Yes. But well, if you had three days, it was wonderful to get down in the being the cool and the absolutely, ocean and. Absolutely. And you didn't. The look of the town, of course, had changed, uh, but but you didn't get the feeling here that that it was an army base. It was still a resort. It or was. Am I wrong? It was during the, during the winter. It was still a resort. You did see a lot of servicemen around, but it was still definitely a resort. Yes. Were there a lack of men, particularly? 
with the army here <laughs> lots of doctors and, and most all the patients yes. were men yes and there were a lot of, of ambulatory patients speaking of doctors you were not particularly involved with the local doctors who who were here but you did was dr staley your S staley staley was your family was the family doctor yes and what do you remember about uh, about him i was healthy i didn't go <laughs> Because Helen Staley is, is still very active. Oh, is she? Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Very interesting. Do you remember him at all? Oh, I remember Dr. Staley. Yeah. What, what but was But as I like? say, I just remember, you know, I'd go to the office, sure. say, with, with grandmother and grandfather sure. or with Where mother. Where was the office? So I think it was down in Palm Canyon, Probably. if I remember. I think it yeah. was. Probably. But in terms of... But in those days, you know, you could go both ways in the streets. Yes. I mean, now you know definitely if it's going that way, you're that's, on Palm. That's, but in that's those true. days, uh, that is but true. I seem to see most of the offices were on, on Palm mm -hmm. Canyon at yes. that time. Yes. That was down a little way, up, I should say, North. Yes. Well, we are fairly much back to the beginning. Uh, I will end with your grandparents. Um, there was one other question that I, about the war that I wanted to ask, and that you you remember rationing. Oh, did yes. Where where did did you live at your grandparents in forty four? I lived at my grandparents except during the summer when I was allowed yeah. to stay in one of the barracks in, with the, with the non. Did you do housekeeping? at the time when you were with your grandparents or did they still have help? In Thomas words, was there. Thomas is still there after it, oh, yes. oh, he wonderful. He was there, so he was he was there, there up until many, they many sold the house. That's I don't know. I mean, no one ever knew how old he was. But you do recall rationing and Oh oh yes. We all had butter coupons and meat coupons and gas coupons. Yes. Oh yes. Well it 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 sounds as if you you really we you obviously love this spot oh, <laughs> spot yes. on earth and uh, I'll you, be back forever as long as I can here. walk I'll be back <laughs> you've played here and you've worked here and we really and do, do appreciate this wonderful history that, well, thank that you, you have. for giving me the opportunity I just hope you it's gonna someone will you. hear and say oh I remember her I'm sure <laughs> they will uh, I did want to end with your grandparents I think it's a rather touching story that they did move in the 50s? They, well, the house... Mid-late 50s. Before, mid mid 50s. Before the house was sold, they moved to Nevada. To Nevada. A small ranch in Nevada. And you said they died uh, simultaneously. They died simultaneously. Grandmother That's died at home and grandfather died downtown on the street. My mother was with them. That is a remarkable s story. It, it is. Really is. And then the house was sold. Sold. And we do, I should mention that we do have our, our opening footage is of the house that I'm sure has changed somewhat, but at least the original. Well, I see there's lawn there now. There was never lawn when grandfather had it. property, yes. He was a naturalist. And mm -hmm. It was desert plain. He wanted the desert as the but desert. But the situation, the site is the same. It was, it was really a, gra a lovely grand house in, in its way. And, and the, the property is the same and the walls and the old... Just house I think it's been repainted or whatever well, and well, it looks like it, at the back of the garage was also a, there's, a, there's a guest room and bath which is Thomas's room ah, yes. and that was always there yes large piece of property very, it is very love quiet but, but lovely, it's it's but uh, actually it was um, small I guess when you compare it to the Kitstons or the Gillettes and the Gillettes have been divided up now I believe into almost four or yeah. five homes but it does, in contrast to the rest of the area, it uh, it it has preserved some of that sedateness, and it's yes. It's and I think the homes up there were a little bit simpler than they were yes. perhaps in some other areas. Yes, lovely. They were not, they were not pretentious, let's put no, it that way. No, not at all. Just just a lovely they piece were. of property. Thank yeah. you very much, Joan. Well, thank you, Nan.